It's been a week since I switched my daily driver from the iPhone 13 Pro to the iPhone SE 2022 and I have a lot of things to talk about. So without further ado, let's get into it. And by the way, I'm going to tell you throughout the video some tips and tricks of how to extend the battery life of this one. First things first, I'm not going to be comparing the 13 Pro to the SE because there is no room for comparison whatsoever between the two. However, though, I'll be comparing the SE 2022 to other devices in the same price range. A love-hate relationship was created in the past week between me and the iPhone SE. It's a great device don't get me wrong but it has its pros and cons i really didn't expect to love how small it is writing on the keyboard wasn't that big of a deal as well taking pictures on it was very enjoyable i love that i can reach the top and the bottom all from one thumb without changing my hand position the phone by itself is very thin and i was really afraid to put it in a back pocket and sit on it by mistake i know for a fact it's gonna crack or bend it's very slippery it could get out of your pocket without you even realizing also you need a screen protector because the first day I got it out of the box, a couple of scratches on the screen, which is very surprising and it really hurts to see scratches on a new phone. On the other hand, with the aluminum frame, it's very fragile as well. In the unboxing video, I dropped the phone from a couple of inches high from the table itself. It landed on the 13 Pro. Thankfully, the 13 Pro, nothing happened to it because it's a strong device. But this one got a scratch on the aluminum frame right away. So first day, a scratch on the screen and a scratch on the aluminum frame so yes this phone is not the most durable it needs a case it needs a screen protector speaking of the aluminum frame this thing heats up a lot and when it did when i was gaming it heated up from one place which was just near the camera and that corner around the camera opened up i kid you not i was really scared to get water near the phone after i saw the phone literally open up and crack open in this corner i don't know if this is a problem with this one only or all of them just something to put in mind yeah and by the way if you get other than the starlight color like red or the very dark blue you're gonna get a lot of smudges and fingerprints on the back of these two but this one is the least fingerprinty let's say although it's a fragile phone i went case free and without a screen protector the whole week yeah it's a risk so really be careful with it on the front of the device we have two gigantic bezels yeah iphone 8 design 7 6 4.7 inch screen 720p not the greatest it doesn't get too bright as well the only good thing about the front of the device is that touch id i really miss touch id on a phone i have it on the laptop yes we do have now face id with the mask with the 13 pro with the latest update but still having the touch id to open it up from any angle i just i can open it up from here i don't have to get it to my face it was really nice to have throughout the week but you have phones like samsung that have it under the screen ultrasonic on the s models which is way more futuristic but whoever is getting this phone they know exactly what they're getting in terms of design. What is really impressive is what is inside. This thing has the A15 Bionic chip, the same thing in the iPhone 13. It's flying through everything I put it through. I played one of the most graphically demanding games on iOS and it played them very smoothly. And because of the efficiency of this chip and the new battery they put it here, I was getting around five hours of screen on time. For a phone at this size and this thickness, that's actually really impressive. Now, if you wanna extend the battery even more than that, first thing you need to do, turn off that 5g it's really not that big of a deal you can also turn on low power mode which will get you a lot of juice and if you're playing any game and you want to get more juice just dial down the graphics and the settings speakers are loud and clear way better than a lot of phones it's really awesome to have such quality speakers at this price now let's jump software wise to get the latest ios and you're gonna keep getting the latest ios with every other iphone for at least five years that by itself is a selling point for me because for a person like my grandpa for example he doesn't want to buy a phone every couple of years he still wants to get the latest updates he still wants a phone that does things as he's used to so a phone like this is actually perfect for that category of people that don't like changing things up that's why the software and how things work with this one didn't change to the new look we still have the control center from the bottom we still get the clock at the top middle the battery and you can add the battery percentage on the right which was perfect you get the siri button from the home button the screenshot 
shot is still the old way with the home button and the power button. I want to start with the pros, although I've been talking a lot of good stuff about it, but I want to really talk about the pros of this one. The second I pulled it out of the box, I immediately fell in love with it. Something about the size, the feel, the rounded corners, I don't know. Something about it made me really love the form factor. Even using it throughout the past week, it has been really enjoyable. And I wished there was a room for this one to be able to continue using it. Unfortunately, there isn't a room in my life. There is a room though for people who want to get it and get with it other devices. For example, a perfect combination will be this one, the iPhone SE 2022 and the iPad 5 air these two just came out in the same event and both of them combined are around a thousand dollars so the same price of the iphone 13 pro yes you don't get the same screen which is 120 hertz yes you don't get the same cameras but you get the m1 chip you get an iphone ipad os bigger screen a phone to have calls messages whatever you want that combination is what my younger self dreamed of and while using this phone i was thinking i wish i had this phone earlier in my youtube days i could film on it edit on it it has a great camera it takes amazing photos and videos you can go watch the video test that i put it out a few days ago it's amazing what this phone is capable of but with all that said yesterday i put out a video saying that i can recommend the iphone se 2022 because it's in the same price range of the iphone 12 mini and the iphone 11 in the case of the iphone 11 you get a bigger screen bigger battery two cameras an ultra wide and a wide and on the other hand with the 12 mini you get a bigger screen in the same size form factor a higher resolution screen OLED screen two cameras a wide and an ultra wide you get night mode and you get also MagSafe on the back so with the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 12 mini you get way more for your buck than the iPhone SE 2022 so after saying all of that who's this phone for it's for teenagers who want to get their first phone it's for grandpas and grandmas who don't want to change things up it's for those who are seeking for the a15 bionic chip power it's for those who love the nostalgia of this design and that's been it for today's episode i hope i answered your questions if i did give it a sub if you still have some questions leave them down below thank you for watching and don't forget that life is all about love and dance see you